What's going on everyone? Welcome to Grace Kids Kids Worship. We are in a series called Rough Road Ahead. And it's part of our big one story plan where we're looking at and we're reading the entire Bible, jumping from story to story, seeing who God is, why we need Jesus, and also how we can follow God. And so today we are skipping a couple books ahead from where we have been to see a guy named Daniel. And so maybe you've heard of Daniel before. It could be a familiar story or your first time hearing it. But let's listen and see what the Bible says. So I have my Bible right here and uh, we are in Daniel 3. Daniel 3. So we well, we skipped over, <clears throat> which is part of our one story plan that we go through it all. But for our lesson today, we saw all these different prophets come and tell the people say hey you need to stop following idols stop doing that and follow god turn away from what you're doing and follow god and god alone and a lot of people weren't listening and there's this king named king nebuchadnezzar now king nebuchadnezzar he did his own thing he did not follow god and so king nebuchadnezzar one one day he makes a gold statue 90 feet tall if you've ever played basketball or seen a basketball hoop, basketball hoops are like 10 feet tall. So that's nine basketball hoops. That is tall. And he makes this thing and he tells everyone that, hey, when you hear the herald shout, it says, people of all races, nations, and languages, listen to the king's command. When you hear sounds of a horn, flute, scyther, lyre, harps, pipes, and other musical instruments, you need to bow down to the statue. Now, Daniel, though, he followed God and he had some other friends with him too who also followed God who were you actually going to learn about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You could try to say those Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. And so <clears throat> they say all this and so this sound goes off and all these people bow down except for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And so this was big, a big problem, okay? And so King Nebuchadnezzar, he calls him, he throws a rage, and he orders them to be brought before him. And when they're brought before him, he goes, hey, is it true that you guys did not bow to this idol I made, this statue I made? And they're like, yeah, we're not going to. And he says this in verse 16. He says, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to defend ourselves before you. If we're thrown into the blazing furnace, think about like a fireplace, but bigger bigger. He says, if you throw us into this furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to your majesty that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. They're saying, hey, no matter what happens, if our God saves us or if he doesn't, we are not going to be worshiping this golden statue. And I think really what he was saying is, hey, we believe in our God. Now, they're not calling on God. Have you have you ever heard of Batman? You know, like where they can shoot like the Batman signal in the sky and then Batman shows up. I don't think it was like that. I don't think God is like a bat call that we have to say, like send when we're in help or when we need something. He's with us all the time. So let's keep reading in our story. So Nebuchadnezzar, he is furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he's like, hey, you know what? You're going in the fire. So he commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than what it usually was. And he ordered the men of the army to get them and to throw them into the fire. And even those soldiers, when they got close, they died because it was so hot. So they threw them on fully dressed pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. They throw them in. And uh, King Nebuchadnezzar is angry, obviously. And so he demanded that the hot fire, the furnace, the flames kill these soldiers. And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were securely tied. Okay, they were chained up and they fell into the roaring flames. But suddenly, this is verse 24, suddenly Nebuchadnezzar, he jumped up in amazement and he sees something different. They threw three people in the fire but when King Nebuchadnezzar looks, he sees four people. Maybe he's doing one of these things. Looking, maybe he's rubbing his eyes, trying to see, see if he's seeing this right. And so in verse 25, he says, look, 
I see four men unbound walking around. They weren't even chained up anymore. They were walking around. And the fourth looks like a God. So Nebuchadnezzar, he went as close as he could because remember, he couldn't get too close. And he shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So they stepped out of the fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the high officers, the officials, the governors, and all the crowd saw that the fire had not touched them. They weren't on fire. It was like it wasn't even a thing. Have you ever been at a campfire before? And sometimes afterwards you smell your clothes and it smells like burnt wood or like a bonfire. They didn't even have the smell of smoke on their clothes. So Nebuchadnezzar, he says, hey, praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel to rescue his servants uh, who trusted him. They defiled the king's command and were willing to die rather than worship or serve any God except their own God. And so he, then King Nebuchadnezzar, he makes a decree, a decree. He makes like a, a, a rule. No one can speak or uh, against these, this God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It says this, if any people, whatever their race, nation, or language, speak a word against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will be torn limb from limb and their houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. There is no God who can rescue like this. So King Nebuchadnezzar, he went from hating, hating what they were doing to then realizing that it is it, that this God saved them. And he says, no one can speak badly about that. But did you know that the same God that he's talking about, that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego followed and, and trusted in, is the same God that we get to follow? We, we've been learning a lot about uh, following Jesus and accepting Jesus. And when we accept Jesus, the same God in the Bible is the same one that is with us that protects us and that will be with us wherever we go. And it's not like we have to call a phone or something or throw a bat signal in the sky. He is with us. And so the question for you is, do you believe him with all your heart, all the time, that he'll deliver you from any kind of hardships or hard times or even be with you during the good times, that he is the reason that they are good times? And if you haven't, you can accept Jesus. And Jesus is the one that sets us free. In the ABCs, we learn that we uh, admit that we are sinners, that we've done wrong things that go against God. And we believe that Jesus was the Son of God, that He's the Savior, and that He died for us, and that He was risen from the dead. And then the third thing is we choose Him, or confess Him, or call Him. We say, we speak it, and we decide to start growing. And so if you went to SBO, you know this verse is that when we follow God, if you've already made this decision, let me remind you of our SBO verse. It's from Acts 22, 15 and 16a. And it is, for you are to be his witness, telling everyone what you have seen and heard. What are you waiting for? A challenge for you could be that if you're following Jesus, are you like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? That maybe your friends are trying to get you to do a uh, something that you know goes against what, what God desires or what God likes. Will you stand firm and go, I'm not going to do that. Like that goes against God. Or are you going to be like all the other people who when their statue went up, they bowed down. So I encourage you, our God is with us all the time. Jesus loves us and is with us and he equips us to follow him through hard times. See you next time.